Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jalen and today I'm going to be talking about the International Booker Shortlist, giving my predictions and what I think is going to win and what I think should win. So, before we get into the video, I'll show what I'm drinking. I didn't grab a drink. Be right back. Okay, so I bought this recently for the channel. I wanted to try some like new different types of beers on this channel and kind of like review them at the beginning because I feel like it's kind of like boring if I keep drinking the same beer or style of beer all the time. So this one is called, I think Honey's Honey's. Is that what that says? Is that right? Basically, it is a peanut butter and honey golden ale. So here's the art. Here we go. It's 5.6% from Oliphant Brewing, Timothy Oliphant. Shout out Timothy Oliphant. He's a very handsome man. Um, but yeah, this could either be very disgusting or could be very good. So let's see. Yeah, peanut butter and honey golden ale. I hope it's kind of like muted, but I, oh, I spilled. Okay, so I'm pouring this like really weirdly because I have my mic in a weird spot in my lap because I didn't plan this video out whatsoever. So can you even hear me? I don't know. Anyways, disaster, disaster. Poured some. Let's see what it's giving. Girl, hold the fucking phone. That's pretty fucking good. That's interesting. I. What are my thoughts? Hold on. Drinks the entire beer. Why you guys wait for my review? Um, it's very like it's peanut buttery and like a light honey flavor, but it still has like that kind of, um, I don't know, golden ale lagerish feel to it. I mean, there's a little subtle sweetness going on. So I think this is kind of like a cool summer-ish vibe. If you've ever had Papago Orange Blossom, this is m mostly for Arizona folk. Tastes very similar to this, but like uh, with the peanut butter bent to it. So anyways, yeah, it's good. It's not too sweet, which I'm happy about, but it is an odd <laughs> beer. Peanut butter, I don't know, I never drink like anything on the heavier side. So like, I'm sure there's tons of like porters and stouts that have peanut butter flavoring, but for, like a golden ale that's kind of like tinged with this flavor, it's really interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know where Oliphant Brewing is from. Let me check. Wisconsin, fun. Check it out if it's in your area, but I like it. It's a vibe. Okay, so getting into the short list. This is the first time I've ever actually like stuck to some sort of a TBR in a month. And I'm really proud of myself for doing this. Um, I was, very unsure about myself promising for the channel. I don't know if anyone like cares or remembers that I promised to do this, but um, that I was gonna read the shortlist and I did for the most part. So status on where I am with the shortlist. I have read At Night All Blood is Black by David Diop, The Employees by Olga Ravin, The Dangers of Smoking in Bed by Mariana Enriquez, and The War of the Poor by Eric Viard. I recently tried reading In Memory of Memory by Maria Stepanova. However, I DNF'd it at like 40 pages. More about that later. And finally, I'm about halfway through When We Cease to Understand the World by Benjamin Labatut. I should have looked that up before I started this video. I apologize. Um, of course, all of the translators will be down below as well. I don't have them memorized off the top of my head, but I think this is a really interesting shortlist. Um, I really enjoyed my time with most of what I've read from the shortlist. So I guess I'll just start from the beginning of what I read. So about six or so months ago, I believe, I read At Night All Blood is Black by David Diop, which I have a separate video review for, which I'll link below. But at the time, I read this like just before it was published, and I hadn't seen any reviews for it. Um, no one on BookTube had reviewed it at the time. And so I felt like I was just talking to a wall about that book. It doesn't really have many views, understandably, but um, I absolutely adored it. It was one of my favorite books last year. I thought it was such a good war novel, which I never really read. So full thoughts in that video. However, I'll sum it up here quickly. I think it's such an excellent look at grief and trauma and friendship and brotherhood and using this backdrop of World War I and you know, adding the added element of race to the text that really sheds a light on the meaninglessness of war and the ways that war severely impacts an individual psyche, particularly when people that are close to them, they see them suffer and they live beyond that. It's written in this very like pleading manner in which the main character, Alpha, he is basically pleading with the reader to believe him and that he is trying to reckon with his own actions in which he failed to kill his friend who was suffering for about two or three days from a severe attack on his body. And he doesn't kill his friend and so therefore his friend suffered for much longer than he needed to. And you see him dealing with this internal struggle of should he have done that? Why did he do that? 
was he okay in doing that? And you see him gradually lose his mind and he starts to the German side and kill off men and take their severed hand back to his side. And you see his side start to initially agree with what he's doing, think it's cool that he's you know killing these German soldiers, but then eventually they start to become wary of him and why does he keep doing this and why is he bringing back these hands and they start to think that he is evil, basically. And you see the added element of race and who Alpha is and his relationship with his friend, Mademba. And overall, I think that book is so beautifully written. It is such a concise, short novel that is able to look at so much and uses such intricate symbols throughout, particularly through the hands and also the added element of doubles throughout. And, you know, most notably, we see Alpha and Mademba as sort of doubles of, of each other. But we also see the way that Alpha uses identity as double, you know, before and after the war and the way that that impacted him and the way he thinks now and why he's behaving in this way. And so you really feel for Alpha and all of these characters because, you know, the backdrop of all of this is trench warfare in World War One, and you see the senselessness in the ways that they're killing each other for seemingly no reason other than that they're told to, and so they're forcing their hand to do this. I know there's been some conflicting reviews on this one from my good friend, Kieran. He did not like this book as much, which I had a feeling he might not. Actually, no, that's not true. I thought he was going to love it. But I should know by now that we don't have the same taste, which is fine, but he's wrong, I think, on this one. I think um, Sarah from Freshly Read Books, she just reviewed this one. I'll link that below as well. She did an amazing, quite lengthy review on every single you know element of this book and how much she loved it. And so highly recommend also Zim, Zim Reads. He's back doing videos on the shortlist, which I love. So yeah, I'll link reviews for those below as well. Check out all these creators that are doing videos on the short list. I think it's such a fun project that we all go on. I think it's really cool and I really want to keep doing it because I think it's fun to be able to you know, get on Discord and talk to other people about what we're reading and our thoughts. And it's really cool seeing the very conflicting thoughts that we have on all these books because like to me, At Night, All Blood is Black is like a near flawless novel. Uh, however, many others think it's kind of like a reductive war novel, which to each their own, but it's really interesting being able to kind of talk about the nuance there and why we think that and... Yeah, so it's very good. I love that book so much. And then next, I read The War of the Poor by Eric Viard. I hated this book. Um, it's like a 60-page or so little text about the German Peasants' War, and to be honest, completely left my mind. Um, it's supposed to kind of be this tiny thesis that's reflected in the text in which it basically examines the power of the written word and the power of using one's voice to counter oppression. And That, I mean, I love, I love that idea, however, and I like that from a craft perspective, how much history and layers he's able to add throughout the text. However, I just think it's a really boring read. I think it's pretty inaccessible if you're unfamiliar with the context here. Um, I had to do some like Wikipedia reading after I read it to kind of understand like, what did I just really read about like in real life? And so, yeah, I think it's, it's an odd little book. However, I think if you are a historical fiction or just a, a fan of history, I would give it a go. It takes like an hour to read but it was a slog for me to get through, just not my thing whatsoever. So yeah, cover that in my ranking later, but did not love that one. And next I read My Baby, The Employees. I fucking love this book. I think it is so smart. Ugh, ugh. So I gushed briefly in my last video about this book, about longing. And I think this is a really interesting look at capitalism in the workplace set in this dystopian future. So the novel is told in these statements from these employees aboard this ship set in the 2100s. And so you quickly learn that there is a distinction between certain characters. So some of them are human on, on board the ship and some of them are humanoids or AI. And what happens is there's these objects that they find that they bring onto the ship and they start to affect the character's psyche. And the novel is told from the perspective of this committee taking individual statements from various employees and recording the impact that the objects has on them and their mindsets and what they are wanting, their thoughts at the time. And so part of it is a mystery in terms of figuring out what this committee is, what is the true purpose of these recordings, are these people telling the truth in their statements, etc. And so It's a very brief little novel. It's told in a bunch of these statements that can be as long as like two pages or just a sentence. You look at the supposed differences between humans and AI and the ways that capitalism and the workplace and constant optimization and you know selling yourself to a company, basically how that impacts someone and what they want out of life and the ways that they think about themselves and their future and the inescapability of this oppressive force on both humans and humanoids alike. And so as you continue on, the distinction between them blurs. Sometimes you're reading a statement and it's explicit that they are humanoid or human. Sometimes it doesn't tell you and it, 
you don't know which one they are. And I think it's a really cool way of kind of blending the two and thinking about what it means to be human. What is the real difference there? You know, why do we like to think of humans as having to be this versus something else? Um, whether that distinction really matters, especially when you have these external forces playing on people in such an interesting way, in such an oppressive way. And so, and by the end of it, it becomes kind of like this, I don't want to spoil anything, but it gets the stakes increase, things kind of happen in the story, which is so cool. I thought it was so well done. It has a really great payoff. I could see without the ending being there, I liked it that it's kind of like a strict narrative. If it feels like you're reading a novel, even though as I was reading it, I was like, oh, I hope this isn't just like the statements and then it just ends. There's stuff that happens and I loved that. I loved that it had a plot of some sort, even though it's using this like weird fragmented statement style. And also of note, like some of the statements, they aren't in order and so it jumps around. And so you're wondering like, is the committee that's telling this to the reader, are they trying to make it biased in favor of the workplace and the committee and the spacecraft? Or is there something else about that? Like what's going on with the way this is being told to the reader and why is it being told? Yeah, I don't know. It's, it, I can talk about the book endlessly, but I think it's incredible. One of my favorite books I've read this year, five stars, loved it, adored it. I love reading these kind of books that are, you know, pushing the needle forward in terms of how a novel can be told. And what I think is really cool about the shortlist this year is that many of the books here are doing that. I think I'll kind of interject here and talk about one kind of through line that's in most of these stories that is not in the next one I'm going to talk about. This blend of interesting structure in the shortlist and also a blend of like narrative nonfiction as well. In most of these, the employees doesn't have it, but it uses this interesting structure, which makes me think that the International Booker Shortlist Committee this year, or panel, I don't know what it's called, but they're thinking in terms of these translated works that are, that are pushing on what fiction can be, whether that be playing with structure or playing with some kind of like non-fictional aspect within fiction and kind of blending the two and making something that's wholly new. So for example, for War of the Poor, it reads as if it's almost non-fiction. Like you're wondering if this is actually like a statement that was written in the past. However, it is fictionalized to some extent. Similarly, with like At Night All Blood is Black, it uses a very condensed form to tell a story set in World War One. It is historical fiction, I guess, so it's not really blending pure non-fictional aspects in it, but I think it's kind of towing that line of interesting structure in a very condensed format and what you can do with looking at history in a very precise, condensed text. And while it's less reflected in the employees, I do think the structure is so interesting that I think that's why it was shortlisted, just because it's doing something wholly original here. However, in the next book that I read, which was The Dangers of Smoking in Bed by Mariana Enriquez, it is just a pretty much traditional short story collection full of like ghost stories and spooky tales. One reason why I think this book was shortlisted is because it uses this kind of backdrop of ghost stories or spooky, weird, dark, sometimes gory tales to look at the political climate of Argentina. And I think that's a really cool way of how horror can be such an innovative way of piercing into something, particularly socio-political issues. And I think Mariana Enriquez does that really well here. However, I do think that this one felt like the least innovative and least impactful overall. And it's not just because it is telling stories that are fantastical or you have to you know, suspend your disbelief a bit. It just feels like a pretty traditional horror story collection at many times. And so I am surprised that this one made the short list. I had a fun time reading it. However, I think it is a mixed bag in terms of quality of the stories. However, I think some of them were very impactful. It stayed with me for a while, particularly one I can think of is Meat. The story was nuts. I think the stories are particularly incisive when it comes to these various issues that Mariana Enriquez is looking at. I do wish that I had a little bit more knowledge of the socio-political background of Argentina to understand kind of the nuance of what she's getting at with these stories. However, some of them it is very clear. The longest story in the collection, I'm blanking on the name, but I think it's called like When the Kids Come Back or something. That one I think is the longest for a reason. I think that one is very smart looking at kind of like the societal complicity and violence is particularly against minors and how nothing is particularly done in terms of making sure that these crimes are brought to justice. And I think you know, using the supernatural element in the story was very, very effective. It's kind of my thoughts on that one. I don't really have too much to say on it other than that it's like a fun, spooky collection of tales. I don't know if I would have picked this for a short list. I haven't read the full long list, so I can't really say. Yeah, I'm surprised, but I think it's kind of cool seeing horror on the short list. I think that alone is, is awesome. So yeah, definitely try that one out if you like horror short stories or short stories generally. I think it's really good. Then next I will talk about In Memory of Memory, which I got 40 pages in. And yeah, I did not love it. I don't think it's a bad book by any means. I actually think the writing is 
like spectacular, I will say. However, I do think that the way that the story is told is quite the slog. So one thing that's pretty common in my reading is that I don't often DNF books. I only DNF them when they're very much outside of my current mood or if I just really think it's bad. And I don't think that this one is bad. I just was not in the mood to sit with a near 500 page story about a woman going through her aunt's belongings and constructing her family history. I appreciate what this is doing. It's using various kind of forms to tell the story of this woman and piecing together her family history through various various objects, whether that be photographs or different journal entries, and looking at a family history in this way. I think it's a really cool, innovative way to structure a novel. It's hard to say if this is even a novel, really. It was just not pulling me from a narrative perspective. I just, I like the ways that Maria Stepanova is looking at memory and what it means to establish a historical record and the ways that our minds can, you know, build up memories that may may or may not exist and how to reckon with that when there's certain things on paper that are part of history. When those clash with what you remember from the past and how to kind of reconcile those two things, I love that idea for fiction. However, I don't think it's completely what I'm in the mood for right now. I I don't want to critique it having even read the book in full, but I do think being 40 pages in and not being pulled whatsoever to the story makes me question whether there might need to be some kind of additional something to the book to make it feel, to grasp me like fiction usually does. And so I think there's something missing there. I would like to maybe try this one again in the future. I just, I just don't know. And I spoke with some friends like on the Discord talking about what they thought about it. Some people really adore this book and love it so much. And some others have DNF'd it. Some others have found it hard to get through at times. And I mean, it's one thing for me to set a TBR, but if I'm, I, I could not see myself forcing myself getting it done by the end of this month. I just was not going to do it. And reading is for fun. So I'm like, nope, putting it aside. Might not pick it up again, but I did give it a shot. I think 40 pages is sufficient <laughs> to know whether I'm going to like something for the most part. And based on what I heard from other people and how it gets even more kind of like essayistic throughout the book, I was like, Ugh, I don't know. I don't know. So that's my thoughts on that one. Finally, I'm currently reading When We Cease to Understand the World. And I think this book is so good. This is completely outside of my regular reading. I would never pick this up on my own. So I'm very glad I tried this shortlist just for that alone. This one, it's hard to even summarize what it's about. It is so weird structurally and like the way the story is told, but it's so surprisingly compulsive. So we're looking at these various historical scientists, mathematicians, and how they're striving to figure out something about the world, whether that be the laws of physics or you know the laws of mathematics and how that plays in our present moment, looking at various backdrops in history of violence, particularly war, and seeing how those two interplay. And so I'm only halfway through, and it's, this book is doing a ton, looking at various historical figures and moments mostly rooted in violence and how that ties into the pursuit of scientific discovery and the ways those two those two things overlap. On the one part, while this is a very historical novel, which isn't my normal thing, I find it so compulsively readable and in terms of the pacing being very quick. It's not really telling a plot per se. This also feels like nonfiction. So there's this interesting thing going on with the shortlist and where there's so much nonfiction, fiction overlap going on. I feel like this is not a nuanced way of talking about this, so I apologize. <laughs> but I hope you get what I mean. I feel like after this, I'm going to be like, why did you not say what you meant to say? But yeah, this blend of history with, with fiction sparks some really interesting results. And I think that might be the focus of the shortlist this year. So I do think, I'm only halfway through, but I think this one will win the International Booker Prize this year. I think this one is so incredibly well translated. It seems like it would be a feat and a half to translate this one. It's very dense in terms of looking at these very complex subjects of physics, mathematics, and telling you know history in this very quickly plotted way. It is so well done. I think in terms of the International Booker Prize being you know part about the translation, I think this one is excellently translated. And it seems to me, I don't know if it's just because the subject matter is completely unfamiliar to me, but it seems like it would be a very hard piece to translate. I haven't read the original in Spanish either. So it'd be really cool to kind of, if I knew Spanish, to be able to read both and kind of see the difference here. But I think in terms of the density of the text while also making it feel very accessible to a reader that doesn't know much about these subjects, I think it's amazing on that front. It's a very grim read at times. I'm learning so much about these various historical figures and I'm wondering where the fictional elements kind of play into this because I'm wondering what is true in the story or what is not because this is not because this is a fiction prize and so I'm interested to see where this one ends up I'll have full you know more thoughts in my May wrap up this month as I'll finish it this week but yeah so those are my thoughts on the shortlist. This is very off the cuff. I apologize. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is I'll go over my ranking of the shortlist. What, if I was on the panel of judges, what I would pick as like the tier ranking for 
the short list. So in last place for me, I will put The War of the Poor. I know I DNF'd In Memory of Emery, but I put that in fifth because I did like the writing that I read. It just wasn't for me at the time. I just think The War of the Poor is even more of a slog than that one to get through, which is very short. So that was kind of what saved that one for a full read. So yeah, I'd put sixth, War of the Poor, fifth, In Memory of Memory, fourth, The Dangers of Smoking in Bed. I think it's a really good horror short story collection that blends horror with sociopolitical issues, but I don't think I don't, I'm kind of surprised on the short list, and it just didn't really impact me heavily, but I do appreciate what it's doing. Third place, I would put When We Cease to Understand the World. I really like this book from what I've read so far, but I will say the next two I just absolutely adore. Some of my favorite books I've read over the last two years, so gotta put it third. And then second, ooh, I don't know. It's so hard to pit at night and the employees against each other, but I think... I think I would put the employee second and at night first. I think the emotional pull of At Night of Blood is Black kind of sold that one for me. And just the very visceral and cinematic feel of At Night of Blood is Black is just beyond. And the way that it's told in such a concise format, that book is just mind blowing. But same thing for the employees, because I think that book is surprisingly very emotional at many times in which you get these statements from humans and humanoids that are longing for life outside of the workplace and trying to find the distinction between those two and what happens when capitalism completely takes over people's lives and how that looks and how bleak and sad that is. But yeah, I think from a narrative perspective, I would put At Night first, but it is a very close call between those two. I love those books so much. So that is where I stand on that, but what do I think will win the shortlist when we cease to understand the world? purely from a translation perspective and the way that it's able to kind of blend this narrative with historical record in this really interesting way. And I think that was kind of like the goal of the short list, at least. I don't know about the long list. I haven't read it. But yeah, my bet is on when we cease to understand the world. However, I'll be happy if, and I'll be happy if that one wins. I really like what I'm reading so far, but I would love for either the employees or at night, All Boat is Black to take the prize. I'd be very happy. But yeah, I'm excited for the announcement. I think Kieran at Katie Books is going to be doing an Instagram live, which I'm going to try to join his live if I can join in the party on that day. So the winner is announced June 2nd. Very excited. We'll see if I was correct or not. I'll reflect on that in a future video. But if you've read any of the titles from the International Booker Shortlist, let me know. If you have any thoughts on what the shortlist was aiming for, if you have any predictions on who's going to win, let me know. Yeah, let's chat about the International Booker Shortlist in the comments. I'm very excited for the announcement. It was really cool partaking in a shortlist read. I really am eager for the Booker Prize now. I don't know if I'm going to do the full long list. I will do the Booker Shortlist, though. I really enjoyed my time doing this. It was really fun. Um, even though I didn't get through all of them completely, I made a good effort, so I'm proud of myself on that front. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. So until next time, cheers.